Oh, um, Hunter Biden has agreed to testify in front of the House Oversight Committee on December 13th, but he is only agreeing if it's public. His attorney is telling the committee, quote, we have seen you use closed door sessions to manipulate, even distort the facts and misinform the public. We therefore propose opening the door if, as you claim, your efforts are important and involve issues that Americans should know about. Then let light shine on the proceedings. Oversight Chair James Comer responding last night. According to Hunter Biden's attorney today, he wants to come forward, and I think that's great. Give him an opportunity. He's going to have due process. He's going to be able to answer some questions. But this isn't about Hunter Biden. This is an investigation by Congress of Joe Biden for potential corruption. Hunter Biden is a key witness in our investigation of Joe Biden. We know the Biden family has received millions and millions of dollars from our enemies around the world. We don't know what they did to receive the money. Lexi Rigdon is a criminal defense attorney. She joins me now. Lexi, look, Hunter's attorney, Abby Lowell, has been around the block. He's one of the most experienced litigators in D.C. He knows full well that a deposition like this on the Hill is going to be behind closed doors. And the only reason he's putting a statement like that out there is because he wants to win the PR battle in the mainstream media, right? I completely agree. And he also wants to be able to say if and when Hunter actually concedes and submits to this deposition. We tried. We tried to put this in front of the public. The, the, the bad Republicans prevented us from doing it, and we, we did what we had to do anyway. And so it really is a PR campaign, for sure. It's all about this notion of, like, look, implying that Hunter has a say in all this. This isn't voluntary. When you get a subpoena, it's not like, well, you know, maybe I'll do it or maybe I won't. No, no, this is a subpoena. You have no choice, Lexi. Exactly. He's got to comply with it. And then what the Republicans are going to have to figure out is if he actually holds true to what he's saying, which is essentially he's not doing this behind closed doors and has to be in public, then they're going to have to determine the extent to which they want to actually move forward with some type of contempt proceeding, whether it's criminal, whether it's civil. And the problem is that getting him to actually comply with the subpoena and, and testify, which is really what they want, can be a lengthy process. So there might be a point where the Republicans have to say, uncle, if he stays true to what he's saying now, where he's saying, I will not come for a closed door deposition. It has to be in, in public so he can be the ringmaster of his own little circus. The Republicans are going to have to decide what they do in that event. Let's focus on the testimony itself. Up until now, let's face it, Hunter's entire life has revolved around Hunter. He's always gotten whatever he's wanted, and his actions have had few consequences. What do you predict happens when he is having to answer questions, if, to your point, he ultimately does, from your Comers, from your Jordans? Is it going to be all, I plead the fifth? Is it going to be all, I don't recall? Or do you think he's going to actually answer? Well, that's a good question. I was actually thinking, why on earth? I mean, if I were him, I'd want to do a test run in a deposition. I mean, obviously, things might get make it leaked, might get spun. But ultimately, the Republicans are saying, you'll have your opportunity to speak to the public. But now is not the time. Frankly, if I were him, I'd want a test run. I wouldn't necessarily want to do it on on in front of everybody. And so that says to me that he's not going to be very forthcoming with what he answers. Because, you know, there's, there's a lot of potential issues there if he actually is. Good point. Meantime, an unnamed campaign aide for Biden's 2020 campaign telling Politico that White House staffers are, quote, irritated that Hunter is being more aggressive in terms of this litigation strategy because he is not clearing the tactics and the strategy. Is this a great approach by Hunter's team, both politically and legally? I think it's a, a, an OK approach for Hunter himself. I mean, we're not in we're not in a time period where politicians and he's not a politician, but politician adjacent people keep their head down and, and, you know, go about their business quietly. We're just not in that era. However, somebody like Trump, who is saying that he's part of a political witch hunt, he's running for president. So he really has to get out there and fight back. Hunter is not a politician. Hunter is just his father's uh, president's son. So he doesn't really have to be doing this. But I think it's not necessarily a bad thing for Hunter, but it can't possibly be a net gain for his father. While it does distract from his father's poll numbers and the abysmal performance on the border, it's still not a good thing every day for in a re-election campaign to have your son in the news for all of his misdeeds. Right. I mean, look, elites like Hunter think they can always game the system. We will see this time if that turns out to be the case or if James Comer ends up winning out in the end. Lexi Rigdon, always appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, all right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.